Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, another science on art. Today we are talking about uh, Dr. Lee again and his claim that you can eat nuts to burn fat or to kill cancer. It's driving me nuts. That's a very stupid joke, but I'm going to keep it in there. I really don't want to make all those videos about Dr. Lee all the time. I really have other things in mind that I would like to make videos about, but um, he is uh, constantly at it at the moment and I, I really can hardly keep up with all the stuff that he's posting. So anyways, um, let's talk about nuts before it drives me more crazy than it already did. Today I'm going to talk about five of my favorite tree nuts that fight disease, repair the body and help fight harmful body fat. They are walnuts, cashews, pecans, macadamia nuts and pine nuts. We're going to divide this video in two portions. There's a lot of things in there, how he's explaining how to eat a walnut, for example. That is something we probably don't need to know. Most of us know how to eat a walnut. We're going to divide it about in two sections. And the first section is weight loss and burning fat. And I think what you need to know before we talk about all the other nuts that he wants to, that he that he's talking about, is nuts are high caloric foods. A lot of fiber, a lot of fatty acids. It's a very healthy food, but it is also very high caloric food. And that is a big problem if you are on a weight loss journey. So I don't say that you can't eat nuts. Nuts are, again, very healthy food, but you have to be very careful with the portions that you eat. If you are losing weight and you're on a weight loss journey, and let's say you're you need 2,300 calories per day. I'm just making up those numbers, you know, but let's say you need 2,300 calories per day, kilocalories to maintain, but you're eating 2,100 or 2,150 calories. So you're losing very, very slowly a little bit of weight. So that's a very non-aggressive way of losing weight, but it works. You have to be very, very careful in that situation. Any type of like high caloric food, you really have to measure this because you can very fast eat those 150 or 200 calories that you're in the deficit. And nuts is one of those examples. So if you want to eat 100 calories of nuts in walnuts, that's three nuts. A three and a half probably average sized walnuts. That gives you roughly 100 calories. Uh, in pecans, four and a half nuts. In macadamia, it's four nuts. Pine nuts, you like a little handful, like 80 nuts, that's not a lot. You can very fast overeat your calories with those high caloric foods. If you watch Dr. Lee's video and you're thinking you're overweight and you want to lose weight and you think that cashews, um, oh, let's play the clip first. Uh, cashews deliver dietary fiber, as I talked about, and they can actually reduce inflammation in your body. and by reducing inflammation, that can counter the effect of having too much excess body fat. So regardless of what your weight is, but especially if you actually have excess body weight, right? Little overweight or a lot overweight, you're gonna have some inflammation in your body and eating cashews can actually counter that inflammation by having the dietary fiber feed your gut microbiome. All right, well, you see, this is, this is where he, this is, I mean, he's really knowledgeable, okay? We we'll give him that. He's a knowledgeable guy and he knows a lot of the details, but this is always where he goes wrong is when it comes to overweight management and weight loss management. Yeah, si like cashews have fiber, dietary fiber, and it, it reduces inflammation. That is true. Like a lot of other things have dietary fiber that are not high caloric foods that can reduce inflammation. It's not just cashews. That is what you have to understand. It's like a lot of the foods contain fiber that have a lot less calories that can help to reduce inflammation by, by changing your gut microbiome. So cashews are high caloric food. Again, eating cashews if you're overweight to add fiber to your diet is like the exact wrong thing to do because you're eating a high caloric food. You wanna eat a low caloric food to add fiber to your diet. I'm not against adding fiber to your diet. It's really important and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. But uh, if you're on a weight loss journey, then eating like, oh, eating like cashews to add fiber is wrong. You wanna eat nuts to add omega-3 fatty acids. Yes, and you can, and again, but be very careful with how much you eat because it's a high caloric food. So you want to eat like 50 or 100 calories a day and you have to put that onto your calorie account that you have every day. The dog is barking. Moo Moo is barking. Now remember, gut health equals immune health. 
And if you want a good, strong immune system to be able to resist infections, you know, if depending on what the season is or whatever bugs and germs are running around, you want to be as armed and as uh, have your immune defenses shields up as much as possible. And eating pecans and tree nuts in general is a good way to be able to um, help get there, have a stronger immune shield by having your those tree nuts feed your gut microbiome. You want to add a uh, low uh, caloric fiber like a lot of vegetables pumpkin like things that that have like a high volume but low low uh, calories that but that contain a lot of fiber that is adding fiber to your diet especially if you're on a weight loss journey the american diet or in fact most of the western society diets are plain and simple not very good okay they're not they're not very good they contain a lot of high saturated fats a lot of carbs and a lot of sugars that have comparatively low fiber content compared to other cultures diets they have they're low on omega-3 usually and they have uh, not a lot of probiotics low in protein they're often containing ultra processed foods so in a way so it's not a good diet and by all measures very unhealthy and there are so, so many examples of food items that you can eat like burgers, fries, pizza, ultra processed food, any type of ultra processed foods. If you over consume on those types of food, you know, which many of us in the Western societies do because that's the food that's available the easiest and you do this for a long period of time, then that is a significant contribution and a factor for long term health problems. And they can range from obesity, cancer, diabetes, and a lot of other heart problems, a lot of other uh, really, really significant health issues that can significantly reduce your life and also the quality of your life. The underlying factor for this is most likely the gut microbiome, which is relatively new science, so that's why I'm saying most likely. Because we do not know which exact food drives healthy versus an unhealthy gut microbiome. We don't even know exactly how a healthy and an unhealthy gut microbiome looks like. He's putting this all on like one thing that we can measure in the gut microbiome, which is diversity. But again, we're only measuring a, a portion of the gut microbiome, probably just the bacterial diversity, but the gut microbiome is a lot more than just the bacteria. Um, that we find there. It's actually mostly fungi and other and single cell organisms that live in the gut that also contribute to the health of the gut microbiome. Uh, let's talk about uh, walnuts and killing cancer and how that is related to gut microbiome. Uh, it's a holy grail in the cancer treatment pharmaceutical world to look for drugs that can kill cancer stem cells. But mother nature beat everyone to the game and walnuts contain this bioactive that can kill colon cancer stem cells in lab studies. Now, what could be going on? Basically, the dietary fiber from the walnuts um, uh, feeds the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome boosts the immune system. That's one of the ways our gut uh, health actually works. Good immune system, plus the effects of treatment, whatever it may be, um, your body combined with the medicines actually can help wipe the cancer out or tip the odds in favor of surviving the cancer. And that's what we think is going on. But the added dividend from walnuts is this ability to be able to kill cancer stem cells, which has been discovered in the lab. Where do we start? Uh, let's first say he's not completely wrong, but, but, and there is a big but, uh, if you find something in the lab and I can tell you that because I'm also a researcher. If you find something in a lab, that doesn't mean that it actually works in nature, you know. Yes, uh, dietary fiber and uh, certain components of fruit, which is a walnut or like other nuts, but nothing else than fruit, are known to be, uh, be anti-inflammatory or even anti -cancer, uh, have anti-cancer properties. There is, certain, there is a whole range of fruit out there that, that do have that. Those ingredients often only work in a very, very high dose in conjunction with uh, cancer medicine. That's number one. Number two, the dietary fiber that you get with walnuts, you can get through a bunch of other foods as well. And, and we know that if you change your diet, it's not just eating a handful of, of, of walnuts. If you change your diet and you add fiber and you reduce your ultra-processed foods and all the other high carb 
low fiber foods, then yes, that will change your gut microbiome. There are studies done on walnuts because of their anti-cancer properties in the lab, studies in mice on colon cancer with, uh, with, with walnuts, and they found, uh, they found a significant reduction of, of colon cancer in mice, that is correct. Um, but even those researchers say that there are limitations to their studies um, and that those mice were also on what I, what I just explained on a westernized standard diet, which is again uh, a diet that is uh, high in saturated fats, a lot of carbs, etc. So uh, there was no control group of uh, mice that were on a high fiber diet that didn't contain walnuts. So it's really not clear if it's like the fiber that is added uh, to, 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 to the diet or if it's actually the walnut that is added to the diet. So if you're overweight and you're used to have like a certain diet to change that diet, you, that, that requires a lot of um, empathy, compassion, encouragement, support from your surroundings. That is what we need rather than somebody telling us to eat like a freaking walnut. Um, that is the first thing that you have to nurture in your environment. If you're not, if your social environment is not in a place where you find the support, then it's going to be very, very hard for you to change your behavior. You will fight an uphill battle. So that's your first fight is already to find that support in your community and in your, with your friends, with your family, with whoever, whoever is there for you to help you changing what you uh, to achieve your goals. The second battle that you fight is then actually the losing losing weight. All right, that's your second battle. Your first battle is to find the support. And then your third battle is to maintain the weight once you get close or where you want to be. There are four main steps that, that we promote on this channel. The first one is um, eat out of all food groups. And those are, what I mean by that is, uh, those are fruit and vegetables grains, uh, fish and meat and dairy products. So you should eat out of all those and you all, you already saw that like sweets and snacks are not part of any food groups, but they can add a lot of calories to your to your diet. So I would recommend to like reduce the amount of food and snacks, fr like sweets and snacks that you eat first. That is already a good start. Um, the second thing is that generally for Americans eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, whole foods. I'm talking about whole food. We always recommend a minimum of five pieces of whole fruits and vegetables a day. That is recommended by the American Heart so uh, uh, Association. Right there, if you do that, if you eat like five pieces of whole fruits and vegetables every day, that already covers most of your fiber needs per day. Do you already have a lot of dietary fiber if you do that? And then the third thing that I recommend is to avoid ultra processed foods. And that is easier done than said. Because in our society, or like a lot of societies now, ultra processed foods are everywhere and they have and they're readily available and they can be hardly avoided. Um, they're linked to heart disease, mental decline, and again, obesity, diabetes, and cancer and other illnesses are linked to ultra processed foods. And um, I want to give like some examples of what ultra processed foods are actually are. There are things like potato chips or any other flavored snacks that you can buy. Any processed meats, uh, breakfast meats, for example, or sauce or many of the sausages or like chicken nuggets, uh, soft drinks, energy drinks. Most of the protein bars are ultra processed foods. Uh, many sweets and gummies and kind of stuff like that are ultra processed foods, packaged soups, uh, baking mixes, frozen meal solutions, cereals, energy bars, uh, and a lot of the bakery items, especially if it's like um, mass produced bakery items, they account under ultra processed foods too. Those are foods that have been altered to include fats or starches or sugars or salts and oils extracted from other foods. And they're typically a patchwork of ingredients, additives and preservatives to make a food product. All right. And then the last thing I want to say is uh, reduce your portion size. That is uh, mostly good advice, especially if you're on a weight loss journey. It's better. And again, that goes again against what Dr. Lee says in a different video, but it is better to eat several times a day, but smaller portions. It's easier to keep your hunger under control and it's easier to stay in your calorie range because at the end of the day, 
you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. And it doesn't matter if you eat like two big portions a day or if you eat like five small portions a day, whatever works best for you is what you should do. For most people, it works best if they eat smaller portions over the entire day than eating like two or three big portions. They often overeat on those portions and then they are not in a calorie deficit anymore and then they're not gonna lose weight. The action in fact will gain weight. All right, so that's it from me. And uh, I hope you're following me on uh, our journey to a thousand subscribers. Um, that will give us the chance to also uh, do this a little bit more professional. At the moment, this is a hobby. I see you soon. Take care.